The latest crisis facing Whistler doesn't bode well for the 2010 games. The resort town's businesses are starving for workers. Many of the ski bums from around the world who usually winter in Whistler are staying home this year. So Whistler businesses are offering all kinds of incentives to prospective employees. But as Robin Stickley reports, accommodation is still the biggest problem. The ski season has begun, but this group of Whistler Black Home instructors haven't been carving up the hills. They spend their days searching the classified ads for a place to rent. Every day, checking uh, websites. Uh, there's newspapers that come out with advertisements, checking those, uh, talking to people on the street, people we meet, and uh, a little bit of door knocking as well last night. The group of friends from the UK and New Zealand arrived in Whistler three weeks ago. They've worked a Whistler winter before, but say this year is noticeably different and it's proving too tough for many seasonal workers. I've definitely spoke to a few people who've gone back to Vancouver or gone back east. For the big employers here like Whistler Blackcomb who hired 900 people this year, the recruiting is a tougher sell as word gets out that the jobs come easy, but that accommodations are so hard to come by here that some workers are camping in tents. Whistler has uh, an incredible array of great things going for it, but the one tough spot in the fall is always uh, housing. And I think uh, that uh, compared to yesteryear, people are aware of that situation and not really willing to take the gamble about getting a job and a place to live. In order to lure the 250 employees needed to staff four pubs and restaurants, the owners at Longhorn are joining a growing number of Whistler businesses upping the ante with perks. Things like free yoga classes, free staff meals and financing for ski passes. We weren't doing those type of things five, ten years ago, but, you know, the market's changed and there's a lot more places in Whistler now as well, right? I mean, there's a lot more hotels and restaurants and bars and that, so to get the, you know, the best people, we figure that we have to, we have to provide a great place to work, a great experience. Gibbons admits Whistler is somewhat a victim of its own success and says it's troubling to see more and more young workers like James, Daniel and Andrew facing the possibility of having to call it quits. But if something doesn't turn up in the classifieds by the 1st of December, they may be saying goodbye to the mountains before they've even laid any tracks. Worst comes to the worst, I'll probably try and go east, I don't know. Or maybe even go home, I'm not sure. And it's not just about finding accommodation, it is about finding affordable accommodation in Whistler. The three young guys you just met in our story told us the last place they went to was about 200 square feet. It had no windows in it and the landlord wanted six months rent ahead of time and 1700 bucks a month for it. We picked up one of the local newspapers here, Chris. There's only 15 ads in total for rentals in the area. And I think this one tells the story best. It says room available, 1600 a month. And just below that, it says couch available for a few weeks. Pretty desperate situation up here. Chris, back sure, to you. It sure is. All right, thanks very much, Robin. Well, it is one of the most spectacular gathering areas for Eagles in B.C., and it's been a local secret until now. Later tonight, we'll have a report on the battle over its future.